and you'll need all three for my next recipe. My take on classic chocolate brownies is guaranteed to put a smile on anyone's face, and not just when they're fresh out of the oven. Blondies. Stock up on these delicious blondies. They'll keep for up to a week, and it's a great way of getting ahead if you're expecting guests round. First off, melt the butter for the mixture. We've had hundreds and hundreds of brownies. The sort of white chocolate version, i.e. blondies, are amazing. A little bit more subtle. Keep a little knob of butter for the end, just to grease your baking tray. Turn the gas down and gently melt that butter. Cast the sugar into the bowl. Just give that butter a little whisk. It sort of makes the mixture a little bit lighter, slightly fluffy. Off with the gas. A pinch of salt in the sugar, then make a little well in the middle and sort of whisk. You can see it's already gone nice and blonde. Love it. Give that a really good mix. And the secret with the butter being slightly warm, sort of, it melts the sugar and nice and smooth. Lovely. A teaspoon of vanilla extract in. Next, lightly whisk in two whole eggs. Just give them a little beat. This is such a delicious recipe, yet so simple. Whisk in the eggs. I'm looking for that nice, sort of rich, textured, smooth paste. You can see why we call these blondies. Beautiful. Next, a teaspoon of baking powder. Baking powder in. Then half a teaspoon of baking soda. That aerates the mixture and gives it that little tartness. You'll see this sort of rise instantly the minute they hit the oven. And then your flour. Whisk with one hand and just slowly add half the flour first. Get that all mixed up. Make sure that mixture is really nice and smooth. Check it occasionally. No lumps. Half the flour in, and then the other half in. You'll feel it sort of almost go nice and firm. And that's why it's so important to add the flour in stages. It stops the mixture going lumpy. It should be just dropping off the whisk. Beautiful. Change over from a whisk to a spoon. Next, I want some texture, some nice sweet chewiness to the blondies. Dried cranberries. They bake beautifully, but it gives the blondie a really nice sort of chewy sweetness in the center. Next, my white chocolate. I'm not going to grate it. I'm going to chop it up. Just slice it like little bits of shrapnel. I want the chocolate like little matchsticks dotted around. Now, oh, chocolate in. Lovely. Fold that in. I want a nice, even distribution of those wonderful dried cranberries. Don't over-mix it. I don't want to break up that chocolate. A nice, even mix of cranberries and chocolate. You can see the chocolate. There'll be parts of the chocolate in the oven that will actually melt. There'll be like little pools of white melted chocolate in the centre. Now, baking tray. Small little knob of butter. I'm going to grease the baking tray and line it some greaseproof paper and just overextend it. Shiny side out, dull side hits the bottom of the tray. In. Greaseproof allows me to maximise on the white chocolate inside the mix. No greaseproof paper, the chocolate can melt and almost stick to the tray, so the paper is just a really nice insurance policy. Secondly, we want that rise and that sort of crispness. Now, with the mix, get your spatula Go all the way round. I don't want to see anything left in that bowl. Position the bowl over your tray. Nice and carefully. Lovely. Don't leave that slice in the bowl. Nobody's licking that one. And then just take the back of the spatula, go into the corners, push, and come back into the middle. Turn the tray around. Let it work to your advantage. Try and get it evenly positioned in the tray. If it goes in even, it cooks evenly. Make sure you smooth out the 
top of the blondie with the back of the spatula. And then into the oven. It's going to rise, so nice and crisp. All that soft gooiness in the centre. Bake your blondies at 180 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes. That smells incredible. Look at that crisp edge on the outside and that sort of soft, gooey centre. Leave that to cool down and it's going to sort of firm up and wrinkle, but it'll stay nice and gooey in the centre. Once it's cooled down, take it out and start slicing. Mouth-watering blondies, a fantastic easy treat to have on hand for yourself or to share. In great baking, as with all cooking, sometimes less is more. The easiest dishes look and taste spectacular when they're done well. And it doesn't come any simpler or more stylish than my next dish. Wonderful baked cheesecake. For me, food always has to be impressive. But when it comes to desserts, often you see sponge sugar or wild decorations. Remember, simple is always the most impressive. This cheesecake is so straightforward, yet so delicious. Now, cream cheese. Leave it out of the fridge for five or ten minutes. Go nice and soft. Trust me, your arms will be thanking you. Sugar in. This cheesecake is New York cheesecake because it's baked. So there's no base. Start creaming the cheese and the sugar. Spending the amount of time I do in the States, if there's one thing they know how to do out there, is the most amazing, impressive cheesecake. Rich, delicious, but so simple. Work the bowl. Lift the bowl to your advantage. Really whisk. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Lovely. Nice and creamy. Now, get your eggs. Add the eggs to the mixture bit by bit. Doing it this way, it's more efficient. A, you're incorporating a lot of air. B, the mixture doesn't separate. The last of your egg. Lovely. Of course, you can use an electric mixer, but why go to the gym when you can just make a cheesecake a day? A cheesecake a day. Keep the bingo wings away. Now, a couple of tablespoons of flour. Give it a whisk. Stops it from going lumpy. Now, I want to scent that cheesecake. I've got the freshness and zest of the lemon in there. I want to sort of tart it up even more. Fold in some fresh raspberries. Sort of just mix them through. Be careful not to crush them. Then grease a cake tin with butter. This will ensure your cheesecake slides out beautifully. Get your mix. Let that fall in. Now take your cake tin and just tap it. The mixture hits the bottom of the cake tin. The raspberries rise and you've got raspberries at the top, the middle and the bottom. And it also stops all these little pockets of air trapping underneath the mixture in the cake tin. So there's no holes in the cheesecake. Now into the oven, 180 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes. Mmm. Slightly souffléed up. Pull off. That's the colour I wanted on top. And look at it. It's one of the simplest, yet the most stylish cheesecakes anywhere. Beautiful. Slow cooking isn't exclusive to just savoury dishes. It's a clever way to transform fruit into wonderful desserts, giving them an amazing, sticky, jammy intensity. Invest a bit of patience, and my next recipe pays off big time. Indulgent and bursting with flavour. Caramelised figs with ricotta. Slow cooking can also take desserts to a whole new level. A gentle, long cook can really bring out that wonderful, rich, sticky sweetness and that depth of flavour in fruits. These are black figs. They are suited to slow cooking, roasting, better than the green figs, because this outside skin is so durable. This is an amazing way of roasting figs, and it's so easy, yet so delicious. Lay your figs out in rows. Take some rosemary and just peel that down. 
Get that really nice fragrant stem. Get your scissors, trim the edge. Almost where you've got a bit of a sort of sharp point. Bring your three figs together and just thread the top of each fig nice and gently. Rosemary works wonderfully with sweet dishes. As the figs roast in the oven, the stalk will impart a lovely, subtle flavour. Beautiful. Dust the figs with ice and sugar, then coat them with a generous splash of balsamic vinegar. Leave them to sit there for five minutes. And they sort of marinate. I know it sounds odd to use vinegar in your dessert, but trust me, it gives the dish a fantastic sweet and sour taste. I'm going to make a really nice caramel. Four or five tablespoons of sugar. Now, flatten that out and get it nice and even. When the sugar is even, caramel cooks evenly. It's changing now. You can see it melting from the outside in. The one thing you don't do is shake the pan rapidly. You can see it almost like sort of a lake defrosting and it's hitting to the centre. Bubbling. It's still not dark enough yet. It's getting there. Turn the gas down and stay in control. Let the sugar melt until it turns a dark amber colour. The secret behind any good caramel is just stopping it from overcooking. Lovely. Take that off the gas. Knob of butter in there. Just gently whisk in the butter. It's cooling the caramel down. You'll see it changing colour to like a cafe au lait. Next, add a glug of the balsamic vinegar. Nice. Beautiful. Got that nice, dark richness of the caramel. A little touch of water in there. That way the caramel doesn't go too thick. Now put the caramel back on the heat. Take your figs and sort of place them in gently. Lovely. And then just add all that lovely little marinade. Mmm, don't waste that. That's amazing stuff there. No. Ice and sugar and balsamic vinegar. There's something so tasty. Baste those figs. Because the skin gets nice and crispy on the outside. And the fig sort of just absorbs the caramel. It's delicious. It's so easy. Now. Into the oven, 190 for 10 minutes. Almost doubled in size. Now look at the colour on them. The smell is incredible onto your plate. They're a lot heavier because they've actually started absorbing that caramel. Now douse the figs with caramel and serve with ricotta cheese. The freshness of that ricotta goes brilliantly well with the figs. I'm going to finish that now with some zest and then some little nibbed almonds and the rich, creamy jam texture of the fig with the ricotta. Okay, brilliant. That is an amazing way of slow roasting fruit and taking figs to a completely new level.